have a hard time solving word problems? Well, today's your lucky day because I have a solution for you. Hi, boys and girls, I'm Mrs. Taylor. Today, we're going to learn three different math strategies showing us how we can solve word problems, especially if they make you nervous. I know exactly what you mean. When I was growing up, word problems really made me nervous but I really felt better after my teacher taught me three different math strategies. First of all, let's stop calling them word problems. Let's call them story problems instead. I always loved it when my parents read me a story before I went to bed growing up. Strategy one, draw a picture. After you read the story problem, close your eyes and visualize what is happening. Then open your eyes and draw a picture. Then you can decide if it makes more sense to add, which gives you a larger number, or subtract, which gives you a smaller number. Let's try an example together. Let's begin by reading the story problem. A teacher put six books on a shelf. A student donated five books to the class, which were put on the shelf. How many books are on the shelf altogether? Now we're going to draw a picture of what's happening in our story problem. A teacher put six books on a shelf. So first of all, I'm going to draw a shelf. Then I'm going to draw six books on the shelf. One, two, three, four, five, six. A student donated five books to the shelf, so I'm going to add five more books to the shelf. One, two, three, four, five. When I look at this problem, I can now see how many books are on the shelf altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Or I can simply say six plus five equals eleven books. I have eleven books on the teacher shelf. As you read the story problem, act out what is happening. You know, like where you watch actors in a movie or on TV. This strategy also helps you visualize what is happening in the story problem. Let's try an example together. Mrs. Taylor saw seven apples on an apple tree. She picked two apples and put them in her basket. How many apples were left on the tree? Here are the seven apples that are on the apple tree. Here's one of the apples that Mrs. Taylor picked. There's the second apple that Mrs. Taylor picked. The question asks how many apples were left on the tree. We can easily see by looking at the tree now that there are five apples left on the tree. Our third math strategy for solving word problems is called cubes. Our third math strategy for helping us solve word problems requires us to become a detective. So grab a detective hat and a magnifying glass. There are five different things in word problems that you need to search for. Together, all of these items spell the word cubes. Let's begin by reading the word problem. On Saturday, I caught six fish. On Sunday, I caught four fish. How many more fish did I catch on Saturday than on Sunday? Now we become the detective that is going to search the word problem for different items. The first item that we're going to find is the C. C stands for circle the numbers. Notice how I circled the six and the four because those are the numbers that are represented in this word problem. U stands for underline the question. Search the story problem for the question. It's pretty easy to find. It ends in a question mark. Underline it so you know what to start thinking about. In this word problem, the question is, how many more fish did I catch on Saturday than on Sunday? B stands for box in the keywords. In this case, I drew a rectangle around how many more because how many more is the keyword that tells me I'm going to subtract in this particular problem. Here is a list of keywords that may be helpful for you to know. Remember when you add, you get a larger number. So you might see such keywords as it all altogether, sum, joined. When we subtract, we're going to get a smaller number. You might see such keywords as are left. How many more? Difference went away. Keep in mind not all word problems use keywords. That is when you should act or draw a picture of what is happening in the story problem. E stands for evaluate and eliminate. When I'm thinking of the word evaluate, I might ask the question, what steps do I take to solve this problem? I can either add the two numbers together, 6 plus 4 equals 10, or I can subtract the two numbers together, 6 minus 4 equals 2. 
I have to evaluate or think about which one of those makes more sense. It doesn't make sense for me to say that I caught 10 more fish on Saturday than on Sunday when I only caught six fish on Saturday. So now I'm going to eliminate that option. When I think about the word eliminate, I'm going to ask the question, which answer choice can I eliminate or get rid of? In this case, I got rid of the 10 because it did not make sense to me. When I'm eliminating an answer, I might put an X over that problem. That keeps me from picking it later on. S stands for solve and check. Read the story problem one more time. Does your answer make sense? If it does, great. If it does not, then use a different strategy or ask your teacher for some help. To make sure that my answer makes sense, I decided to draw a picture. This is similar to what you might see in a pictograph or a bar graph question. I started off with six fish on Saturday, and then I drew four fish for Sunday because that's how many fish I caught. So you can notice that the difference between the two is two. So it makes sense to say that I caught two more fish on Saturday than I did on Sunday. I sure hope that these three math strategies that we learned today are going to help you feel more comfortable solving word problems. Oops, I mean story problems. If you liked today's video, make sure to click the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single adventure. Until next time, hold your head up high, ask your teacher lots of questions, and practice, 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 young mathematicians. Bye.